Right. So, a very good afternoon, everyone. So, I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Guba. I am the general medicine educator on an academy platform. So, this is one of the very important trending topic, like which is going on now, and as a part of your COVID-19. And definitely, you can expect the questions from this very important topic of this black fungus, white fungus, and yellow fungus, right? So, what is all that I will be discussing in this particular session? So, what is this black fungus first of all? And I will take up the question like, is it contagious? And why is it occurring more commonly in COVID-19 patients? And what will be the clinical features of this particular black fungus? And how do we diagnose this particular black fungus? And apart from this black fungus, can there be other fungal infection in COVID-19 patients? And how is your black fungus treated? And this particular black fungus, is it life-threatening? And how to prevent the occurrence of this particular black fungus? Okay, so... Right, so these are all the things like which I'll be discussing in this particular session. Now, so first and foremost, the very, very important question is, does the color of the fungal infection, does it matter? Right, does it matter? Now, the very important point is the terms like black fungus, white fungus, the yellow fungus, these are, you know, misleading and they are creating a panic among the people. Okay. And all these, you take black fungus or you take white fungus or you take yellow fungus, all these fungal infections, they are all come under, they come under your mucormycosis, right? They come under your mucormycosis. The names like black, white, yellow, it is completely misleading and that is creating a, a very big havoc among the general population. So that is the reason why instead of focusing on the color, it is important to analyze the infection and what is the reason behind that particular infection is what very, is what very much important. So the color of the fungus is not important here. Then, so then why did we get this particular name like black fungus, white fungus, yellow fungus? Why did we get this particular name then? Let me tell you. See, for suppose, if that particular fungal infection is causing the black color to the affected areas, like for example, you can see this image, you can see that there is black color appearance over the nose, right? And there is minimal reddishness over the face and as well as even the orbits. And because the tissues are turning black, that is the reason why it is being named as the black fungus. But let me tell you, the organism is the same mucormycosis. Then what is white fungus then? What is white fungus? When the fungal attacks the private parts or the fungus attacks over the tongue, there will be white color discharge or white color patch over the tongue. Then we give the name the white fungus, right? Then we give the name the white fungus. Then when do we call yellow fungus? Now because of yellow color pus that is formed in the area wounded by the fungus, the people are calling it as the yellow fungus, okay? So it is the color of that particular fungal infection over the skin or over the discharge or over the tongue that is giving you the name as the black fungus, white fungus or yellow fungus. So remember, the, we, the organism is same, that is your mucormycosis, okay? So this part, now what is very important is that we need to control what is that element which is causing this black, white, yellow fungus. Color is not very important here, right? Color is not very important here, okay? Right, now, which group of individuals are more prone for the fungal infections? This is not a new thing for you, right? This is not a new thing for you, okay? So, who are a group of individuals susceptible to the fungal infections, right? Number one, diabetic patients. Now, is it like all the diabetic patients are prone for fungal infections? Let me tell you. See, diabetic patients, diabetes itself is an immunocompromised state, 
there is a risk of development of fungal infections. And apart from that, those individuals who have developed diabetic ketoacidosis, right? So acidic environment, it helps. It is a very good environment for the growth of this particular fungus. Okay, so diabetic ketoacidosis is a very important risk factor for the development of this fungal infections. And the second important risk factor is the steroid medications. Those individuals who are on steroids, they will the steroids will reduce the immunity of the individual and steroids will also increase the blood sugar levels. And those group of individuals, they are more prone for or susceptible for the fungal infections and the blood malignancies. Now, any of these particular malignancies where there is defective immune system, those group of individuals are also prone for this particular fungal infections, right? That is your mucormycosis. And the next group of individuals are those group of individuals who are on immunosuppressants. Like for example, you take organ transplant patients, right? They are on immunosuppressant to prevent the graft rejection. The immunity of the individual is reduced and those group of individuals are prone for these fungal infections. And not only that, the patients who are taking the excessive iron, remember the iron like in these patients with COVID-19, there is excessive iron right? There is increased serum ferritin levels. So the increased iron is a very good medium for the growth of this particular fungus. And other group of individuals are the malnourished people. So these are the group of individuals who are more prone for this fungal infections. So coming to your black fungus, white fungus or your yellow fungus, it is the same organism that is mucormycosis. Right, that is your mucormycosis. Okay, so mucormycosis is a serious but rare fungal infection caused by a group of molds, and the name of that particular mold is Micromycetes. Right, the name of that particular mold is the Micromycetes. Okay, now <clears throat> what are all the organisms which comes under your mucormycosis? Under the group of mucormycosis, we have the organisms like Rhizopus mucor and as well as the rhizomucor. So these are the few subgroups under this particular major group of the mucormycosis. Right? So this mucormycosis is what it is caused by the molds of the order mucorales. Right? It is caused by the molds caused of the order the mucorales. Alright? Next. The very important thing is about this fungus this mucormycosis, it is angioinvasive. Through the blood vessels, angioinvasive means through the blood vessels, it can spread to the various organs from the site of the inoculation. And where is the site of inoculation? I will tell you. So, these fungi, they are angioinvasive. They invade the surrounding blood vessels and they destroy and it will cause the tissue necrosis and as well as the death of the individual. Okay? So, that is a very important point. Why there is a spread? Because these are angioinvasive. Now, the first and foremost very, very important question is, is your black fungus or is your white fungus or is your yellow fungus, is it contagious? No, it is not contagious. It does not spread from one person to other person. This is very, very important point. Please remember this. It is not contagious. Then, how does it spread then? How does this mucormycosis spread? Let me tell you, the spores of this particular mucormycosis, they are present in the air. They are present everywhere. They are present in the soil. They are present in the dust. They are present in the air. And if these particular spores, if they are inhaled, right, if they are inhaled, they get lodged in the nasal cavity and from the nasal cavity it goes to the adjacent tissues and thereby causing this particular mucormycosis. Okay, so very very important point, right? The spread is through this particular spores. It is not contagious. Okay, next. The next important question is if the fungi are so common, right? We have discussed that the fungi are present everywhere. If the fungi are so common, why is it that we rarely get infected by them? So we should be very much thankful to our immune system. It is our immune system which helps us 
to get attacked by these particular fungal organisms or the fungal infections. So even though we inhale the spores of this mucormycosis, if our immunity is good, then our immune system will fight against this particular fungal organisms and will kill the fungal organisms and thereby we remain infection free. Now, the very important point is because this black fungus, yellow fungus or white fungus, we are seeing very commonly in COVID-19 patients. Why is that? Right? Why is it occurring in COVID-19 patients? And in this COVID-19 patients, this black fungus, it is occurring either during the hospital stay or several days to couple of weeks after the discharge also, this mucormycosis is occurring. Now, why is that? Why is it occurring in this COVID-19 patients? Let me tell you. See, what this COVID-19, the virus will do is, it will alter the internal milieu of the host. And the alteration of the internal milieu is in such a way that it will be acting as a very favorable growth medium for the fungus. Okay, so the COVID-19 causes the favorable alteration in the internal milieu of the host for the fungal growth. And this particular COVID-19, it also damages the airway mucosa and it also damages the blood vessels. So number one, it is alteration of the internal milieu of the host for the fungal growth. That is one of the risk factor for why there is mucormycosis in COVID-19. Next, the another important thing is, as already I have said you in the beginning also, that is increase in the serum iron. So COVID-19, it causes increase in the serum iron, which is a very important medium for the growth of the fungus, right? Which is a very, very important medium for the growth of the fungus. And that is another reason why this mucormycosis is very common in this COVID-19 patients. And in COVID-19, we are using the steroids in order to reduce that particular cytokine storm. And when we are using the steroids, these steroids are increasing the blood sugars. These steroids are reducing the immunity of the individual and upon which we are attacked by this mucormycosis. And not only steroids, medications even like zinc supplements, there were some reports saying that increased zinc in the body is also a very favorable medium for the growth of the fungus. So medications like zinc supplements will also help in the growth of the fungus. This was one of the case report in one of the papers. And the other thing is the judicious use of this broad spectrum antibiotics. See, whenever we are using this broad spectrum antibiotics, this will not only kill the pathogenic bacteria, this broad spectrum antibiotics, they also wipe off the protective commensals. Right? They also wipe off the protective commensals. And that is another reason why we are more prone for this particular fungal infections. That is in COVID-19 patients when we use this broad spectrum antibiotics. Okay, next. Another reason why COVID-19 patients are more prone for this mucormycosis is long-term ventilation. See, long-term ventilation, it reduces the immunity and there are speculations of the fungus being transmitted by the humidified water being given along with oxygen. So whenever you are giving the humidified water along with oxygen, there, there is a speculation that the fungus is being transmitted. So all that whatever we have discussed, increased sugars, steroids, zinc supplements, increase in the iron, long-term ventilation, humidified water, all of them, they will form a very good recipe for mucormycosis infection, right? A very good recipe for mucormycosis infection, okay? Right, I will discuss, right? What to do when the iron is increasing, I will discuss. In the treatment part, I will discuss how do you treat this particular increased iron levels in our body, okay? Just give me some time and I'll discuss regarding the treatment. So these are all the reasons why there is COVID-19, why there is mucormycosis in the COVID-19 patients. Now, what are the clinical features of mucormycosis infection? And how do we diagnose this particular mucormycosis, which is the black fungus? As the name itself tells you, rhino, nose is affected, cerebral, brain is affected, orbital, 
I is affected in these patients with the mucormycosis. Now, let me take up the individual organ wise. First, you take the nose because the spores, they get lodged within the nose. So initially, you will have the nasal manifestations and that would be in the form of nasal block, bleeding and discharge from the nose. These are the initial features of mucormycosis, right? Nasal block, bleeding and discharge from the nose. And not only that, when you do, when you do an endoscopic visualization of the nasal cavity, Right? When you do an endoscopic visualization of the nasal cavity, you will be able to make out the presence of the black ishkara. Right? You will be able to make out the presence of a black eshkar when you do an endoscopic visualization of the nasal cavity. So the initial features of mucormycosis are the nasal block bleeding and discharge from the nose. Next. Now, this particular fungus from the nose, it can enter into the heart palate. So, as the disease progresses, the palate may be destroyed. So, you can observe when you do a palate examination, you can see the presence of a black necrotic mass. Right? So, you can see here the presence of black necrotic mass may be seen on opening the mouth of these individuals. So, nose, then palate. And you see next, the next is the involvement of the orbit or the eye. When the orbit is involved, there is proptosis, where you have the protrusion of the eye. And not only that, there can be also loss of movement of the eyeball. Right? There is also loss of movement of the eyeball with consequent double vision or diplopia. And apart from that, these individuals will also have eye pain, redness with blindness can be seen. So these are the ophthalmic manifestations. So we have seen nasal manifestations, heart palate, and then ophthalmic manifestations. Then followed by that, this particular organism, what did I tell you? It's an angioinvasive. If the immunity of the individual is less from the nose, right from the orbit, it can spread even to the brain. Mainly the frontal lobes are commonly affected, right? Mainly the frontal lobes are commonly affected. Okay. So if the brain is invaded due to the blood vessel blockade, there it can be stroke, hemorrhage and even the death of the individual and what are the things which tells you that the individual has a poor prognosis let me tell you if a patient with mucormycosis if the individual has drowsiness if the individual develops hemiplegia or limb weakness or if the individual develops seizures these are the bad prognostic signs in patients with the mucormycosis please remember this is a very very important point in mucormycosis Drowsiness, hemiplegia or limb weakness and development of seizures. These are the poor prognostic signs of the mucormycosis. That can make the individual even to land up in the death. Okay, so you can see here the nasal involvement. You can see here the orbital involvement, right? And gradually you can observe here the involvement of the cerebral cortex as well. Okay, now, now once you have a clinical suspicion, of mucormycosis. What is the next thing you need to do? You need to do the MRI and as well as the CT scan of the nasal cavity, sinuses and as well as the brain. And this will give you, right, this will give you a very clear picture of this particular lesion. So you can see here an MRI of an individual with rhinocerebral mucormycosis. So this patient has underwent multiple surgeries Right? So, there was involvement of the frontal lobe, there was involvement of the orbit and this in individual, there was also involvement of the sinuses and this particular patient was treated with amphotericin B but even with amphotericin B, the individual manifestations did not subside and later on, this particular patient also was started on isovuconazole or your isavuconazole. Later on, after starting this isavuconazole, there was a very good improvement in this particular patient. Okay. Anyways, treatment I will discuss in detail, but these are the manifestations. So, what all we have discussed now? Nasal manifestations, palate involvement, involvement of the eye, involvement of the brain, and the next important thing is involvement of the lung. See, Involvement of the lung, that is lung mucormycosis, this will create a lot of diagnosis difficulty. Why? Because 
even you take in COVID-19, the presentation will be in the form of fever, cough, shortness of breath. And even you take in case of mucormycosis, the manifestations will be the same. Then how will you diagnose the mucormycosis? How will you differentiate it that from COVID-19 there? Your CT scan is the one which will help you. Right CT scan, it helps in the diagnosis by revealing the additional lung lesions. So you can see this particular CT scan, you have the presence of the mucormycosis lesion in the left lobe of the lung. Right in the left lobe of the lung. And not only that, your bronchoalveolar lavage. So by doing a bronchoalveolar lavage, you can do a microscopic evaluation. So even that also helps in diagnosis of your lung mucormycosis. Right? So this is about the clinical manifestations in patients with the mucormycosis. Next, another very, very important question is that, can there be other fungal infections in COVID-19 patients? This is another very important question. Let me tell you, in Western countries, mucor has not caused as much havoc that we have seen in India. But apart from mucormycosis, in COVID-19 patients, there can be infection even with aspergillosis. There can be infection even with the candidiasis. Okay, so uh, along with your mucormycosis, the other fungal infections that can be seen in COVID-19 patients is aspergillosis and as well as the candidiasis. Now, coming to the treatment. Yes, Praveen Kumar, I will answer your question now. How do you treat this mucormycosis? So, what is your ORCOM now? It is rhino orbito cerebral mucormycosis. That is what is your ORCOM. Rhino, orbito, cerebral mucormycosis. What is the drug of choice? It is liposomal formulation of amphotericin B. Right? Liposomal formulation of amphotericin B. That is the drug of choice for your mucormycosis. What is the dosage and what are the adverse effects of this particular liposomal amphotericin B? The dosage of Liposomal amphotericin B is 5 mg per kg body weight. That is a dosage. I am not talking about amphotericin B. Amphotericin B dosage is 1 to 1.5 mg per kg body weight. Right? But what am I discussing? Liposomal amphotericin B. The dosage is 5 mg per kg body weight. But if there is CNS involvement, if there is cerebral cortex involvement, you have to increase the dosage of this liposomal amphotericin B up to 7.5 to 10 mg per kg body weight. That is the dosage if there is CNS involvement. But the only disadvantage is that whenever you are using this particular high doses of liposomal amphotericin B, that is associated with nephrotoxicity in up to 40% of patients. Then what to do now? The individual has developed renal failure, but still mucormycosis did not come down. What are the alternative antifungals? The alternative antifungals what you can give is isavuconazole and as well as posaconazole. Posaconazole, it is also available as the oral formulation. Right? So, these are the two alternative antifungals in those individuals who cannot tolerate the amphotericin B. Yes, Praveen Kumar, you are asking me, can you give posaconazole? Yes, you can give posaconazole in patients with the mucormycosis. But voriconazole, it is not very much effective. Right? Posoconazole and isavoconazole and amphotericin B, these are the drugs which are very much effective for your mucormycosis. And there is one important question here. The adverse effect which is caused by isavoconazole is, it will cause short QT syndrome. Right? The individual will have the development of short QT syndrome. So what do you mean by the word short QT? The QT interval will be less than 340 milliseconds. Right? The QT interval will be less than 340 milliseconds. That is what is called as the short QT syndrome. Okay. Now, the next important line in the management is the surgical intervention. See, whenever there is a development of necrosis, you should not wait for the debridement. So, debridement of necrotic tissue in combination with the medical therapy is mandatory for patient survival. 
and in rhino cerebral disease surgical care it includes the drainage of the sinuses and may require even the excision of the orbital contents and the involved part of the brain has to be removed so this is another very very important point if there is development of necrosis don't hesitate to take out the necrotic tissue then only the individual can survive but always remember along with the surgical treatment even the medical therapy has to go parallelly okay next now what are the adjunctive therapies one is medical management the other thing is your surgical debridement and hyperbaric oxygen therapy we don't have many studies on the use of this hyperbaric oxygen therapy but some of the reports have shown that this hyperbaric oxygen therapy it will reduce the acidosis and thereby it will reduce the fungal growth this is another adjunctive therapy that is hyperbaric oxygen therapy and next the colony stimulating factors colony stimulating factors mainly we have to give in the neutropenic patients so they have been used to in increase the immune response specifically in neutropenic patients right as like interferon gamma and as well as the wbc transfusions okay but how effective these are not very clear right not very clear okay now then coming to the iron chelators right i think swati swati was asking like how to reduce this particular iron see you have to give iron chelators but you should not give the old iron chelators what do you mean by this old iron chelators old iron chelators example defloxamine right you cannot give defloxamine please don't give defloxamine okay why because the defloxamine it will act as an iron chelating agent and that will be acting as a source of iron for this growing fungus like rhizopus and thereby increasing the risk of mucormycosis so please don't use the old iron chelators what is that you have to use you have to use the newer agents and these particular newer agents are defloxirox right defloxirox so they will decrease the risk of mucormycosis via iron starvation however they have not proven clinically efficacious okay so that is about your the new iron chelator that is defloxirox right you should not give old iron chelator so please remember this is a very very important point okay yes swati is that clear for you now which particular iron chelator has to be used now coming to the mortality right are these infections life threatening yes the mortality it is nearly around 25 to 90% and when will you suspect the mortality when there is involvement of the brain then the mortality rate is very high and already i have said you if there is hemiplegia or weakness if there is development of seizures or if the individual is in a state of altered sensorium mortality is very very high sir how to prevent the occurrence of this mucormycosis and always remember prevention is always better than cure okay what are those preventive measures sir right what are those preventive measures let me tell you in hospital you need to maintain the good hygiene and cleanliness is must regular oral hygiene with mouthwash iodine gargles that is one very important and whenever you are administering the oxygen in the hospital the humidification must be very much sterile right humidification must be sterile to prevent this development of mucormycosis and the next important thing is steroid usage steroid usage must be limited i don't say that you should not use but it should be limited and at the same time when you are using steroids you have to use you have to see that the individual should have a very strict blood glucose control very important and the other thing is unnecessary use of broad spectrum antibiotics should be avoided so these are the preventive measures what we take in the hospital right these are the preventive measures what we take within the hospital okay right so 
Okay, so a very good question by Sindhu. So Sindhu is asking, sir, what if mucormycosis is present in pregnant women? Iron is necessary for them. Should we also reduce iron in this case? Right. So Sindhu, in pregnant women, we have a parasite. Who is that parasite? The fetus is the parasite. Fetus will be continuously taking the nutrition. Right? Fetus will be continuously taking the nutrition. And the iron which is present within the women will be continuously absorbed by the fetus. And that is the reason why you have to give iron supplementation in pregnant female. Okay, Sindhu, is that clear? So, if you don't supplement iron in pregnant female, the female will land up in iron deficiency anemia. So, even though pregnant female infected with COVID-19, you should not stop your iron supplementation if required. Okay, right. So, these are the preventive measures within the hospital. Sir, my hospital se bahar aa gaya. I have got discharged. Now, I am staying in my home. What are the preventive measures that I have to take to prevent the mucormycosis? So, you need to stay indoors as much as possible. Regular exercise. Control of blood sugars. Right? Your surroundings within the home should be very hygienic. You need to maintain the oral and nasal hygiene. While going out, always wear the N95 mask. Avoid going into the construction areas, fields or grounds. And soils are, soil and plants are the areas about uh, which are abundant with fungi. And that is the reason why you should avoid working in soil gardening. So these are the measures that you have to take once the patient is discharged to prevent the development of mucormycosis. Now, to summarize the entire story of mucormycosis, this is a very, very important slide I am telling you. Very important slide. That is, post-COVID, during recovery, if the patient develops sinus headache, facial pain, stuffy nose, bloody nasal discharge, blackish discoloration over the nose or palate, eye pain, swelling, diminished vision, double vision, tooth pain, headache, seizures, drowsiness, limb weakness, then immediate medical help must be attained. This is very, very important slide. Okay. So, post-COVID, like we are seeing, many of the individuals getting deteriorated. Why? That one of the reasons would be this mucormycosis. So, this is about your black, white, yellow fungus. So, please remember the color of the fungus. Right? The color of the fungus does not matter. Everything is your mucormycosis. Right? Everything is your mucormycosis. So, in this session, I have tried to discuss what is your black, fun black, what is black fungus, is it contagious, no it is not contagious, why is it occurring in COVID-19 patients, there are multiple reasons, one among that is your increased sugars and increased usage of steroids, what are the clinical features, nasal manifestations, palate, eye, brain and lung involvement, can there be other fungal infections? Yes, there can be even other fungal infections also. And how is your ARCOM treated? Number one, medical management, amphotericin B and surgical debridement if there is necrosis. And are these infections life-threatening? Very lethal. They can cause high mortality if there is involvement of the brain. And how do you prevent the occurrence of your ARCOM? I have already said you, how do you prevent in the hospital stay and how do you prevent when you have got discharged? So, this is about your a very, very important topic that is your mucormycosis. So, from now onwards, please don't use the terminologies like black fungus, white fungus and yellow fungus. We have only one fungus that is mucormycosis in COVID-19 causing the rhino orbito cerebral mucormycosis, right? So, with this, I will wind up this session and this particular PowerPoint presentation, I will just post it in my Telegram channel or I'll post it in the Unacademy Telegram channel. So you can download this PPT and you this will help you a lot in the final revision for your upgoing NEET PG, FMG and as well as the INICT exam. So thank you very much. Right. I hope this helped you a lot for your exams.